morning everyone. I hope you're all well. It's been a little while so apologies for that. Life's kind of got in the way of tying recently. But uh, I'm back at the vice and I'm keen to show you another pattern. And what I am tying for you in this instalment is a fly called the Big Red. Something that works really well over here in the UK, certainly on the big reservoirs that uh, that I fish at this time of year. I've got a fishing trip coming up fairly soon actually and uh, I'm tying up some for my box now. Um, you recall from previous videos I tied a couple of buzzer patterns which are the pupae of the non-biting midge here in the UK, um, also known as chironomids. And this is basically the hatching version of the buzzer. It's designed to sit in the surface film and imitate an insect struggling to get out of that film as it hatches. Um, fairly simple to tie, uh, wonderfully efficient on the water. So let's go ahead, see what materials you need and crack on and tie. In the vise, um, I have a Togan's wet fly hook size 12. On that, you can obviously see I have some red thread. Brand doesn't matter, whatever you know, whatever your favourite is. For the um, tail breathers and the head breathers, there's going to be some breathers here. Uh, I've just got some white polypropylene yarn. The body and the thorax is Vicuna dubbing in crimson. The rib of the fly, um, and this is something I've only started using fairly recently, and it is a game changer for me, it's absolutely amazing stuff, is uh, Togan's anti-static bag. This one is size 0.5mm, so it's pre-cut, so uh, you don't need to faff around with a craft knife, and it's amazing stuff. It has some excellent reflective qualities without being in-your-face flashy like the Mylar tinsels are, it's just it's wonderful stuff. <laughs> And then we've got a little hackle on the fly, which is just going to be um, Gamecock in red. Um, so let's crack on and tie this fly. As you can see, I've started the thread, taking it down to uh, somewhere just past the point. It doesn't too matter too much where. And then brought it back up to the top. Um, I've only brought it back up to the top because I like tying my materials that way. I like tying down towards the bend of the hook, not up towards the eye. And we're now going to put in that polypropylene yarn. Um, and it doesn't matter how much you have sticking out the back because we'll cut it short later on. Breathers on these um, are very, very short. Um, very much like on the Kironomids. You see people tying in, in uh, Canada and the United States. Uh, shorter breathers over here as well. I'm just going to take that down. And if you hold the polypropylene yarn up, much like the tag end of your thread, you'll get nice uh, touching turns all the way down and lay down a good, good thread. Uh, there we go. Uh, and I'm not going to leave that long. It gets in the way a little bit. I'm going to cut it now. I'm going to use the bend of the hook as a guide. And there we have our breathers. I'm just going to take that thread back up so it doesn't slip off the end. And what we need to do is go all the way back up to where we tied on. And you notice I started a good few mil back from the eye. That's because we just need to post this polypropylene yarn. And I wanted, in my mind, to be visual where the thorax started. It makes, it makes this next bit, which is a little bit fiddly, much easier. So first of all, we're just going to put a little dam in front of that polypropylene yarn so it sticks up. And then we're going to try very quickly to post the thread up the polypropylene yarn and the reason we're doing this is because the hackle is going to um, it's almost stacker style really this hackle the hackle is going to be tied up this polypropylene yarn post and the final act of tying this fly is to bring the post over the top of the thorax I'll leave that there. I think that's probably pretty good um, and tie it off at the eye so the hackle is up on the top and not underneath the fly. But uh, all will become clear. All will become clear. So once you've done a, a half decent job of, of tying in a post and you're happy with it, you know it's, it's kind of up straight on top. <laughs> Make sure you've got no um, stragglers. We can go back down, take the thread back down, 
towards the bend of the hook and at the same time tie in the anti-static bag rib. And this um, half mil size ASB is absolutely the perfect size for a size 12 hook. Couldn't fit any better. You're probably going to get no more than two, maybe three wraps. But literally that's all you need. It's just it's the hint of the rib. So next up, we get the dubbing out. Uh, this crimson is a lovely colour actually. And um, what I like to do with dubbing is put it on in little bits. It doesn't need wax. Just lick your fingers, make them moist, and then that gives you a little bit of tack just to just to get those turns of the dubbing done and it wrapped around the thread. Make the noodle fairly even. And you can always come back. Less is more with dubbing. Oops. Yeah, most people use dubbing like they cook pasta far too much all the time. Um, I'm certainly guilty of the pasta thing, and it's taken me years to get the the knowledge for the round to bite of dubbing for the right type of body. And you can see I've not I've not got quite enough there. It's always easier to add more. It's much harder to take it away. So I'm going to put a little bit more on the thread. And keep going up. And you want to make the body as a little bit of a carrot shape, um, wider towards the eye. But uh, we need to remember that anti-static bag is a slippery material. We're not going past the post here, by the way. So um, you need the body to be fairly level with no very few lumps and bumps, because um, otherwise the anti-static bag will slip off as you tie on. So. We've got the body on, we're now going to rib the fly with the anti-static bag and a little tip here, when you've got the point of the hook and the thread hanging down, if you have a rotary vise, just tilt it slightly and that means you dodge the point and then the thread instead of having to do both. And as you can see, I'm counter wrapping here. So there's one, two, I might get a third one. How's that looking your side? Shout if it's uneven. There we go, there we go, thank you. And I'm going to just lift that up there and tie it off in front of the post. Oh, that's pretty good, it slips slightly nicely. Um, like I said, it's a slippery material. And because it's a slippery material, we're going to go deep into the thorax for it. Snip off the excess. Tidy up, and then go back down here. Right, so that's the body done. Next up, you need your hackle. In uh, in true Blue Peter style, here is one I made earlier. Um, and what we're going to do is tie that in. As I say, we're going up the post, so I've got some bare stem, but that's just to get me started. And we go again along the thorax, snip off your excess, drop to good. Right. Thread back to the start. And when I say start, of course, I mean thread back to the post. And then we need the same colour dubbing again for the thorax. Um, if you want to do a slightly looser dubbing noodle, go for it. Um, but what you do want is a more pronounced thorax. So you want a bulbous thorax, but not over the top. This is still a small insect, but as it's hatching, you do need that defined thorax, much like the buzzers I tie as well. So I think this might do us. I'm just gonna, there we go. Start that off, come to the eye back Should I loop there we go so it's post sits right up you see what I mean about that thorax it's it's pronounced and we've got a little bit of that needs a bit more I'm not entirely sold on the shape of that yet I'll stick a little bit more dubbing on and try and rescue this Right. 
to leave a little space at the eye to tie off the post that we're going to want to be happy with that, to be honest. There we go. Right. We're going up the thorax. Well, no, we're not. We're going up the post with the hackle now. Um, this is fiddly work. I use hackle pliers. You don't have to if you don't want to. And to be honest, you might be able to tell my feather has twisted. I don't mind that because this is sitting, it's not, we're not looking for a perfect dry fly hackle here. This hackle is sitting above the water to give the, uh, the imitations of, of wings and legs and other insecty stuff. So we're just going to keep it as is. And what you do need to do when you're doing this is fiddly, you need to hold onto the post because if you don't, as you might have seen, um, if you don't keep tension, your feather will slip, the post will slip, and it will all become a mess. So when you think you've done enough, bring it forwards, have a look. It's nowhere near far enough yet because you don't want a great big piece of white polypropylene yarn showing on top of the thorax, really. Not sure the fish will see it, but you'll know it's there. You won't fish it with confidence. It's all about, you know, fishing your fly, it's all about having confidence in the fly. And if you've got a great big piece of white polypropylene yarn unfinished, it's going to look a bit pants. Two more and then we're good. And again, you can, you can always do more because we're about to cut, cut this off. So I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lick my fingers, draw those feathers back, again and again. I'm going to try and get hold of my bobbin holder, there we go, and then do a pinch and loop, slide the thread down, look away now. Slide the thread down just to keep it. So that's kind of slippery stuff. You can tell me what's happening here. Ah, it's all going wrong. Right, we'll try the old fashioned way. A couple of locking wraps just so that I can sort myself out. And then we'll pull it all back. Have the hackle pliers fall off. Don't worry about those things that are pointing forwards. We'll deal with that in a minute. Snip off the excess tag end of the hackle. There we go, that's gone. Right, we definitely do not want any feathers pointing forwards. So all of those, I snip them off. If you've got a little burn it burning tool, you can burn them off. Um, but get rid of them. I don't like the look of them. Put it away. Yeah. Right. I'm going to try and draw everything back. We do want the breather at the front to kick up a bit, so we are going to stick some couple of wraps there. We'll get rid of probably one or two here without snipping your thread off, of course. We've all been there, especially on video. Right, perfect. And then just a couple of wraps over the top like that. Uh, then we're going to find my varnish. Ooh, what? I need some varnish. I'm going to put a little bit of varnish on the thread. I don't varnish the thread after I've done the whip finish. I varnish the thread there and then I'll do a whip finish. One, two, that. Seat the knot. There's a sneaky, uh, sneaky piece of hackle here. There we go, that's gone. Right, that's all good. And then we're going to cut the breathers at the front, broadly the same length as the back, maybe a bit longer if you want to. There we go. We're going to give it a quick, quick dubbing scrub. Not much, not much, 
little bit, a little bit. Just gonna snip those really long ones, don't like that. There we go, perfect. And finally, um, we're gonna get the hackle, and we're gonna squish it, and we're gonna squish it, like that, there we go. And that, scruffy little monkey, is the big red. As I say, it's absolutely lethal, certainly on the, on the large reservoirs where I fish in the UK. Um, give it a go. Uh, imitate a, a number of, of hatching insects over here. It's the non-biting midge, but try it in different colours, try it with different materials. Let me know how you get on. I hope that's been useful, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much. <laughs>